The assembly is now in session. Assembly member Gibson notices the absence of a quorum. The sergeants at arms will prepare the chamber and bring in the absent members. The clerk will call the roll. Ashajian, Alejo, Allen, Arambula, Atkins, Baker, Bigelow, Bloom, Bonilla, Bonta, Bro, Brown, Burke, Calderon, Campos, Chang, Chow, Chavez, David Chu, Canton Chu, Cooley, Cooper, Dabobne, Daly, Daly, Dodd, Eggman, Frazier, Gaines, Gallagher, Christina Garcia, Eduardo Garcia, Gatto, Gibson, Gomez, Gonzalez, Gordon, Gray, Grove, Hadley, Harper, Hernandez, Holden, Irwin, Jones, Jones Sawyer, Kim, Lackey, Levine, Linder, Lopez, Lowe, Mainshine, Mathis, Mays, McCarty, Medina, Melendez, Mullen, Nazarian, Obernolte, O'Donnell, Olson, Patterson, Quirk, Billy Thomas, Rodriguez, Salas, Santiago, Steinorth, Stone, Thurman, Ting, Wagner, Waldron, Weber, Wilk, Williams, Wood, Mr. Speaker. Members, a quorum is present. A quorum is present in the assembly. We ask our guests and visitors. We ask our guests and visitors in the rear of the gallery 
probably in the rear of the chamber and in the gallery to please stand for the prayer. The day's prayer will be offered by our guest chaplain, Rabbi David Azen. He is ordained by the Jewish Institute of Religion at Hebrew Union College, Rabbi Azen. In Paris, a ritual took root on a bridge, you may be familiar with it, where lovers would take a lock and attach it to the sides of the bridge and throw the key into the river below. Eventually, the number of locks were so great that the weight of them was threatening the structural integrity of the bridge, and so the authorities removed them, 45 tons of metal in all. The hundreds of thousands of keys lying in the mud at the bottom of the river remain untouched. Imagine, if you will, a different take on the meaning of these locks and keys. Each lock represents an individual murdered in the Holocaust, and each key signifies the tossing away of their ability to unlock the potential they had and our ability to unlock and learn more about the meaning of their lives. The weight of the locks, the sheer weight of the numbers of lives lost and potential destroyed and tossed away, threaten the ability of our minds to comprehend and might want lead us to want to clear the bridge in our minds. We are here today to witness the heaviness of memory and to declare that no matter how great the urge might be to unburden ourselves of this weight, we will never do so. We are here today to help each other bear the burden together as our sacred duty to the dead, to say that we will never remove the locks and we will continue to raise up the keys to learn more about those who were lost. We are here today to declare that together our bridge is strong enough to confront the past and from that strength to increase our determination to work for the day when everyone can, in the image of the prophet, sit neath their vine and fig tree, and none shall make them afraid. May our gathering only deepen our fortitude and determination to build bridges between peoples and to honor the keys to everyone's life. Can you hear us own? May this be the will of our Creator. And may the time come speedily and in our days. And let us say, Amen. Thank you, Rabbi. We ask our guests and visitors to remain standing and join us for the flag salute. Please join Assembly Member Linder as he leads us in the pledge. Mr. Linder. Thank you, Speaker and members. Uh, begin with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Thank you. You may be seated. Reading of the previous day's journal. Assembly Chamber, Sacramento, Monday, May 9th, 2016. The assembly met at 1 p.m. Honorable Autumn R. Burke, Assistant Speaker Pro Tem of the Assembly Presiding. Chief Clerk E. Dodson Wilson at the desk. Reading Clerk Kathleen M. Lewis reading. The roll was called. Assembly Member... Mr. Calderon moves and Ms. Waldron seconds that the reading of the previous day's journal be dispensed with. Presentations of petitions, there are none. Introduction and reference of bills will be deferred. Reports of committees will be deemed read and amendments deemed adopted. Messages from the governor, there are none. Messages from the Senate, there are none. Motions and resolutions, the absences for the day. For legislative business, Assembly Member Allen. And for illness, Assembly Member Debobne. Mr. Calderon, you are recognized for your procedural motions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I request unanimous consent to, to suspend Assembly Rule 118 and allow Assembly Member Bloom to have guest photographers on the floor today. Mr. Bloom's guest will be in the area of the member's desk and at the rostrum as we observe California Holocaust Memorial Day. Without objection, the request is granted. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I request unanimous consent to suspend Assembly Rule 45.5 and allow Speaker Rendon and Assemblymember O'Donnell to speak on an adjournment in memory today. Without objection, the request is granted. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At the request of Assemblymember Quirk, please remove file item 110AB1708 Gonzalez from the consent calendar. Without objection, such shall be the order. Members, 
we will now move to the special assembly ceremony for Holocaust Memorial Day. We will move to file item number 64. That's ACR 152 by Mr. Bloom for the purpose of third reading. The clerk will read ACR 152. Assembly Concurrent Resolution 152 by Assemblymember Bloom and others relative to California Holocaust Memorial Day. Members, while we pause for a brief moment, just a reminder to members and guests to refrain from using mobile phones for pictures or otherwise during the ceremony today. Mr. Bloom, you may open on the resolution. Thank you and uh, good morning, Mr. Speaker and members. Good afternoon. I rise to present ACR 152, which declares May 16th, 2016, as California Holocaust Memorial Day. For the past decade, the California State Assembly has honored survivors of the Holocaust during a designated California Holocaust Memorial Program. It is a day in which we remember the six million Jews and countless other victims and survivors and liberators of the Holocaust. More than 70 years have passed since the tragic events of the Holocaust transpired. The Holocaust was a carefully orchestrated, state-sponsored program of cultural, social, and political annihilation under Nazi tyranny. Before the Nazi takeover of power in 1933, Europe had a vibrant and mature Jewish culture. But by 1945, 12 years later, most European Jews, two out of every three, had been killed. Entire families, cultures, villages, and cities were wiped off the face of the earth because of these cruel and barbarous acts that we must never, ever allow to happen again. Part of today's ceremony is about remembering the dark days of the Holocaust and the depravity and evil of that time. But remembering the darkness of that time is not the only reason we're here. Survivors went on with their lives, raised families, started businesses, and created a state for the Jewish people. So while we remember the tragedy, we are also reminded of the resilience, the triumph, and the human spirit. We must recognize the heroism of those who provided assistance to the victims of the Nazi regime and teach our children and future generations that acts of heroism during the Holocaust serve as a powerful example of how our nation and how we as individual citizens can and must respond to acts of hatred and in inhumanity. We must remember that the Holocaust did not escalate overnight. The bigotry and discrimination against Jews and others that the Nazi party considered undesirable began as an ideology promoted many years before their rise to power. So events like today are here to remind us that freedoms cannot be taken for granted and that sadly, we must always be vigilant against hatred, bigotry, and discrimination in our world. Members, we are deeply honored to be joined by those who tell their inspiring stories of survival and perseverance because they are also the stories of the millions who paid the ultimate sacrifice and are not with us here today. Each story helps us learn from those who have experienced humanity at its worst, and in some cases, humanity at its best. And each story reminds us the constant need for good people to stand up against evil and to never be afraid to stand up for what is right. And while none of us will ever be able to fully comprehend the Holocaust in the same way as those who experienced it firsthand, we must do all we can to listen, learn, and document each story and then pass this knowledge on to our children and our grandchildren in the hopes that this never happens again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bloom. 
Mr. Medina, you are recognized. Mr. Speaker, members, honored guests, on behalf of the Latino Legislative Caucus, I thank my colleague from Santa Monica and the members of the Jewish Caucus for authoring this resolution to honor the millions of life, lives lost during the Holocaust. The atrocities perpetuated by the Nazis were horrific, and it is important that we never forget that dark chapter of our history. We must educate the next generation and every generation after that about the Holocaust to ensure the genocide never happens again. The people we honor today offer us a glimpse of hope as we look forward to a brighter tomorrow. Hope in the sense that we can recognize and replicate the courage, resilience, and dignity that survivors and their families have displayed in spite of tragedy. Simply acknowledging these survivors' journeys from oppression to survival is an additional defeat of the Nazis' hateful ideology. But we must continue to be on guard. The defeat of the Nazis in World War II did not end in tolerance and hatred. Even now, the voices of division and discrimination continue to perpetuate our politics and the politics of other developed democracies. Today, I am proud to join my colleagues in committing myself to working towards a future with compassion and tolerance. May the struggle of those whose lives were lost and those who survived be an inspiration for each of us to live with hope in our hearts and courage in the face of adversity. For these reasons, I urge you to add your full support to ACR 152. Thank you, Mr. Medina. Mr. Holden, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise on behalf of the California Legislative Black Caucus in support of ACR 152. Members, over the history of the human race, woven and twined are similarities of experiences that remind us that notwithstanding different races, cultures, religious beliefs, or sexual orientation, we are more alike than different. So it is with Jewish Americans and African Americans. These cultures share the painful grip of oppression isolation, and indignation. The power of faith to overcome the hate of oppression and the, the unceasing pursuit for justice and reconciliation binds these two cultures. As we remember the Holocaust and the unimaginable atrocity inflicted on the Jewish people, let us be inspired by their sheer will to survive and the redemptive grace that comes when the hate perpetrated against them did not become them. The Holocaust will always remind us that as people of this world, our God-inspired responsibility is to love, not hate, and to never forget what the world looks like when hate overtakes love. I'm honored to be in the same room as true heroes who have not only survived the atrocities of the Holocaust, but who have continued to fight for a more just and peaceful world for all people. I extend heartfelt welcome to the 2016 Holocaust Memorial Day honorees, and for this reason, members, I urge your vote for ACR 152. Thank you, Mr. Holden. Mr. Levine, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I rise in support of ACR 152. On May 5th, the entire nation of Israel stood in silence for two minutes to remember those who lost their lives during the Holocaust. Every year, Israelis anticipate this somber moment of reflection. Drivers exit their cars, men and women stand still in the streets, children stop playing, and people solemnly listen to the sound of an echoing alarm. On Yom HaShoah, or Holocaust Remembrance Day, this sound reminds the world to never forget. Eli Wiesel said, the duty of the survivor is to bear testimony to what happened. You have to warn people that these things can happen 
that evil can be unleashed, race hatred, violence, idolatries, they still flourish. As the population of remaining survivors continues to diminish, it is more important than ever that we remember the atrocities of the Holocaust. As time passes, we must take it upon ourselves to listen to the stories of survivors and honor those who endured the despair of the ghettos, enslavement in concentration camps, and the horror of death marches. Today, we also remember those who are in their last moments here on earth witnessed the darkness of humanity in the gas chamber and perished. Last week, Israel also celebrated the 68th anniversary of its founding as a nation. Flags were raised from half staff to full. Mourning and somber speeches gave way to fireworks, concerts, and jubilation as the nation of Israel celebrated Independence Day. The juxtaposition of these two days is a key part of Israelis' experience of national mourning. In his Independence Day message, President Reuven Rivlin said the state of Israel was born out of a hope of 2,000 years. It was born with the bravery of dreamers who worked to turn their dream into reality. Today, our Jewish heritage and history is being threatened by the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement. The BDS movement is an organized international campaign to delegitimize and demonize Israel. This effort has led to anti-Semitic activities on our college campuses and contributed to a dangerous environment where Jews feel threatened and attacked. That is why 21 states are taking up anti-BDS legislation. In seven of those states, legislation has already been signed into law. As we honor Holocaust survivors today and remember and mourn those who were murdered, let us keep a steady vigil to make sure that the hate of the Holocaust does not pervade humanity today. As a society, we must learn from the past and overcome the world's evil. Yehuda Bauer told us, thou shalt not be a victim, thou shalt not be a perpetrator, but above all, thou shalt not be a bystander. I thank the author for authoring this resolution and urge my vote. Thank you, Mr. Levine. Ms. Garcia, you are recognized. Member Speaker, on behalf of the Legislative Women's Caucus, I, I rise in support of ACR 152. Today we stand to recognize those who suffered the injustices of the Holocaust and to celebrate the veterans who valiantly fought for freedom and liberation of all people. While the Nazi regime targeted all Jews, the regime frequently subjected women, both Jewish and non-Jewish, to brutal persecution that was sometimes unique to their gender. Certain individual concentrations in areas within camps were designated specifically for female prisoners. Women were, su were subjects for sterilization experiments and other unethical human experimentation. In both camps and ghettos, women were particularly vulnerable to beatings and rape. Pregnant Jewish women often tried to conceal their pregnancies or were forced to submit to abortions. The German established brothels in some concentrations and labor camps, and the German army ran roughly 500 brothels for soldiers in which women were forced to work. Women were also played an important role in the resistance movement. Women served as couriers who brought information to the ghettos. Women served in armed partisan units. Women were leaders or members of ghetto resistance organizations. Women engaged in resistance inside the concentration camps. And women were active in the aid and rescue operations of the Jews in the German-occupied Europe. I encourage all of you to vote aye on ACR 152 to co commemorate this part of our history and the important lessons we must learn. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Garcia. Dr. Eggman, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, members, guests. Welcome to this chamber. I rise as the chair of the LGBT caucus to also surge a, a strong recommendation for ACR 152. The LGBT community stands in solidarity with the Jewish community. It was in 1934 that the Gestapo started first making the pink list to put everybody who was a homosexual on a list to be kept track of. And in 1935 is when they revised, it was paragraph 175 that said anybody who had homosexual tendencies, practiced lewd and lascivious behaviors, should be taken to the camps. 
The death rate for the LGBT members in the death camps were up to over 70 percent. And it wasn't until 1969 that, once, that Article 175, Paragraph 175, was taken out. So people, even after the liberation, were still kept in camps and made to serve time in prison. The Nazis linked together abortion and homosexuality as another way to combat it, as a way to increase the population of the Aryan population at that time. We see now, we think these times are past, but we see now across this country people passing laws uh, against the LGBT community out of fear, out of ignorance. For so long, people who have faced a high degree of privilege often feel like others' equality is an oppression upon them. We have survivors in this room today who can stand in strong support that other people's equality does not oppress anybody, but that the more we bind together, the stronger we all are. I urge us to vote aye on this 152 and forever remember that together we are always stronger and to resist any kind of efforts to tear us apart. Thank you, Dr. Regman. Mr. Nazarian, you are recognized from your desk. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and colleagues. Today I rise as a proud joint author in support of the resolution to honor the victims and survivors of the Holocaust. Over 70 years have passed since one of the darkest times in our world's history came to an end. This House regularly and appropriately recognizes uh, the victims and survivors for their courage, and we continue that on an annual basis. Yet the remaining survivors and descendants of survivors are reminded not just one day a year, but daily and hourly of the horrific events that once took place. As a member of the Armenian Caucus and a descendant of survivors of the Armenian Genocide, I know firsthand what it is like to live with the daily reminder that millions of people, our people, were systematically killed for no reason other than hate and who they were. I challenge us as members of the State Assembly to carry on every day with the same courage and the same conviction as our honorees present today, and those who endured terrible suffering decades ago. And let us commit to never being indifferent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Nazarian. Mr. Williams, you are recognized. As chair of the API caucus, I rise in support of ACR 152. And I also uh, welcome the survivors that are here with us today. They still have much to teach a society whose memories are often too short. The Nazis murdered over 11 million people, 6 million of those were Jews. Hundreds of Jewish communities in Europe that had thrived for sometimes hundreds and sometimes thousands of years were destroyed and lost forever. ACR 152 is a statement against the blind hatred and injustice that led to the Holocaust. It is our job to take your experiences and teach to our children the incomprehensible consequences of prejudice, racism, and stereotyping of any culture or society so that we may prevent this from occurring in our people's future. Assemblymember Bloom, thank you for honoring the victims of the Holocaust and bringing this measure forward. I ask for your aye vote. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Mr. Chavez, you are recognized. Yes, I'd like to rise also as a member of the Republican Caucus in recognition of this uh, important resolution. The Holocaust goes down in history as one of the most despicable things that mankind has ever done. But sadly, the 2,000 years before that is a journey that the Jewish people had undertaken throughout the world. I'm happy to say that they are now in Israel, and as they know, the United States will always stand with Israel, and I'm hopefully this caucus, this assembly will also be with them. You know, today, politically, we hear about these different things that are going on now there, and Israel has always been a friend of the United States. As many of you know, I served in the military for three decades. I'll tell you, the oldest serving veteran group in the United States is the Jewish War Veterans. 
There were, they were there before the American Legion. They were there before the VFW. They were the first. They are our heroes. I'd just like to thank the members for bringing this forward. The Holocaust needs to be highlighted on how despicable it was. But we also need to understand that every day we need to continue to fight for the freedom of Israel. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chavez. Mr. Gallagher, you are recognized. Mr. Speaker, members, I also rise in support of ACR 152. Um, as a young man, I had the opportunity to go to Washington, D.C. as an intern. And one of my most memorable experiences uh, from that my time there was visiting the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. And if you haven't been to, back to see that, members, I would really encourage you uh, to do so. Um, but as I walk through that museum and, and you really see everything that occurred, um, it's a very powerful experience, very, left a very strong impression on me. And as I came out of that museum, I purchased this small rock uh, that you can get it as you leave the museum. And I now have it on my desk uh, here in the Capitol. And this rock simply says, remember. And it's important that we remember, first, the victims and the survivors. And I've had the opportunity to meet many survivors as I've been involved um, in public service. And their stories need to be told. They need to be retold so that we never forget. But we also need to remember so that this never happens again. And I believe it was Hannah Arendt who described the Holocaust as the banality of evil, of how, how ordinary this all became and how so many people um, were used by the system and went along with the system to commit such an, uh, an atrocity against people. And so we always need to be on guard, members, uh, and as, as we remember today, we always need to be on guard when the power of government is used to go after religious and ethnic minorities, uh, when the power in the hand of government is used to take away people's freedoms. Um, and I, I will continue to do that. And I, as I have this, this rock to remember on my desk, I will continue to do that. And, uh, and we should all do, do as much. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gallagher. Mr. Wagner, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I um, told this story my first year up here at the ceremony for Holocaust Remembrance and um, have not repeated it since, but do want to, in the never forget tradition, uh, as I have my last opportunity uh, due to term limits to, to participate in this ceremony, I do want to tell just a quick story um, I am not myself Jewish, though it is my understanding of the Nazis' uh, hideous uh, anti-Jewish laws that under their rules I would have been in the concentration camps because of my mother's heritage. And I never met my grandfather because he died in that war fighting against the evil that we remember today. And I think that says this is something, number one, not peculiar to Germany or that time. It is something that can, in fact, touch and does, in fact, touch many, if not all of us, and ripples throughout time to, to wash up against uh, virtually everyone, if not every one of us. And that's why it's so critically important that today and all days, but, but certainly that we do what we do today, to, to never forget. As my great friend just said, um, there are evil governments out there. They remain out there. And the evil that was done to several groups of people, one in particular, um, is something that sadly is not too far from the hearts and the capabilities of folks who today are running governments and have opportunities to repeat. 
that evil that will then again ripple through generations. My thank you to the author, my thank you to this house, and especially to the survivors who are here helping us remember, because we aren't as far removed, unfortunately, from those terrible days and those terrible thoughts and policies. Um, we must always be on guard. And to the author, you are to be commended, sir, for helping us keep that guard up. And thank you to all the survivors and those who are here today. Um, you do us, you do us an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wagner. Seeing no additional discussion on the resolution, Mr. Bloom, you may close. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you to each of our guests who are here with us today helping to commemorate uh, uh, the Holocaust. And I want to thank each of uh, my colleagues for your heartfelt comments, uh, all of which uh, individually and cumulatively ring true. I, I also want to thank so many senators for joining us here uh, on the floor of the assembly today as we commemorate uh, the, the Holocaust. I think it's uh, worth noting that it has been 71 years since the last concentration camp fell, and most survivors and liberators are now in their 80s and 90s. And each year, we lose more and more of this generation. And so it is all the more incumbent upon us to learn these stories, to remember their stories, to commit them to our children so that generation after generation learns the horrible lessons of the Holocaust. And each of my members have, have, have told a, a different vignette about it. It is so true that the Nazis were all about a master race. They were the ones who were superior to everyone else. And so it may have fallen on Jews to be the main target. If you were gay, you were a target. If your skin was dark, you were a target. And on down the list. It is incumbent upon us to remember the lessons of the Holocaust. Thank you. I ask for your I vote. And I'd like to uh, first open the roll for co-authors, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Bloom is asking that the first roll be open for co-authors. Members, the clerk will open the roll. Members, this is for co-authors, adding on ACR 152. This is for co-authors, members, on the resolution. There are 75 co-authors added. Without objection, we may take a voice vote on the resolution. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted.